All right, so let's jump over to the next tab, which is the filters tab, which I consider to be the icing on top of the cake. What this basically allows you to do is, there's basically a, a library of these predetermined effects or filters that you can apply onto your terrain. And you want to kind of think of it like Photoshop because you can layer these layers on top of each other to create some really interesting and unique looking terrain. So I'm going to click on add layer. So this will be our first layer and this layer is basically going to contain filter effects so we can add multiple filter effects within this single layer. So I'm going to name this test and then, oops, name that test and then the area over here, uh, basically we'll be able to select a certain area, a, pre a predetermined area where, we, where that particular filter effect will just be active. So I'll show you how to do that. It's actually really simple to do. But the main thing we want to click on is this filter. So I'm going to click on add. It brings up this window that just has a bunch of these awesome filters and each one of these filters has its own description and a visual representation of a before and after so you can see exactly what's happening over here. So I'm just going to go ahead, go to the fix tab and click on distort and I'm going to click on OK. So you'll see automatically it adds that filter on our terrain and each one of these filters has its own unique filter properties uh, that's yeah, unique to that uh, particular filter. So, uh, like I was explaining with the area, if I go to this areas section over here, okay, there was a previous area that I had selected, and we click on add area, you'll see it basically creates a bounding box over here. If I drag this out like this, this means within this region over here is exactly where I want this filter effect to be present. So once I've got that set up, I'm going to head back to surface, and now if I go to area and just select default name, you can see that particular filter effect distort is just visible within that region that I specified. So this is just a nice way to allocate a different filter details in certain regions uh, wherever you want them to be. Like you can see I can go ahead and add a new layer. I'll name this test2. Let's add in a new filter. So this time let's go for something like uh, maybe I'll go to alien and say created cliffs. Click on OK. Right, and now I'm going to go back to areas, let's say add area. Now this one I want it to be present maybe just in the corner over there. So I'm going to go back to surface and nearby test to area. Oops, I want to make sure I'm actually naming this stuff. You can see I got confused there, so default name 2, default name 2. Right, let me increase the general strength. I go back to area, default name to make sure it's not clipping right on the edge. Uh, but you can kind of get an idea. You can see in real time now where this effect is being applied. So that's just a nice way to specify where you want these different details to be. And that's using a completely different filter. All right, so you can see this area has been dug in. And then just in this area over here, we have this really alien, very strange looking terrain detail but that's how you can select different areas and apply filters to them all right but we'll still be covering this more in depth to explain some properties and some other settings here okay oh just one more thing to mention when you saw me actually moving this around and i i remember i said that it shouldn't clip you by the edge uh, it really doesn't matter it actually can go right up to the edge like all the way over there the reason why you see in it the effect being applied here as well is because if I go back to surface and base I've actually got seamless enabled so if I turn off seamless go back to areas select this now you can see that effect is just visible over here but I want to make sure I keep seamless on just so I can see everything being applied at once and because obviously I want a seamless terrain so just something to keep in mind uh, when you're creating these terrains obviously you can rotate and choose wherever we want this particular filter to be visible. Okay. All right, so we just touched on areas very briefly. I'm gonna go ahead and create a new project so we have a clean slate over here. So I'm gonna go to the areas tab and click on add area. Now by default, this is what we were working with, right? We just had this basic bounding box, but there's a, there's a whole lot of other options over here, but I'm obviously gonna be showing you what I use the most. There's some features that I don't really use that much in my workflow, but there is something awesome over here that we didn't touch on, and it's this painting and sculpting property. So we're gonna to get to that uh, just in a moment. But before we actually start messing around with the areas, let's go back to the surface, go to filters, add a layer, add, and let's add an erosion deep. 
just so we can see what's actually being affected with the areas. Um, and then nearby area, I'll click on none and select that default name. We can go back to areas, click on default name, and now we're in the areas tab. So the previous video I showed you that we could just scale this bounding box like this to determine where that area or that faulty effect is just going to be applied. But now let's go back to areas over here and let's just explain some of the other features over here as well. So you can see this width and length is actually being affected by our bounding box. So you can see when I'm dragging that, those values are changing. We can actually fit this to the entire terrain size if that's something that you are going for. All right. Um, you can actually overlay images in here and use them as reference images, something I don't really use. Uh, so I'm not really going to touch on that. Uh, the resolution as well, I haven't seen it affect my terrain that much. Us usually as long as I go to base and my precision is on a resolution that I'm happy with, I usually get crisp and clear displacement or height maps when I actually need to export it out. So I'm going back to areas, don't really mess around with the resolution, overlay image. You can import a previous height map that you exported as an area. Uh, something I also don't really use that much within my workflow. Now what I do use is this blend map properties and this painting and sculpting property. So this blend map properties over here, you can see obviously we can choose to show or hide our blend map, hide or show the border. We can choose the overall range over here of where our blend map's being affected. As you can see it's almost like a, gra a gradual shift over here that's showing you which areas are being affected. And then we can choose to control the strength of that faulty effect using the area as well. But now let's say we want to get really creative and we don't just want to be constricted to just a simple square bounding box. This over here is the cherry on top and it's called painting and sculpting properties. If I click on edit blend map, right, you can see that by default they give us a bunch of these awesome brushes that we can actually use in our scene. If I start painting on here by default, we don't see anything happening, right? And that's because we actually need to clear our blend map that's been applied on here. So just go back to blend map properties and click on clear, click on yes, and now you're going to start with a fresh slate. So you can see just like Photoshop, we have these soft round brushes, hard round brushes, but now this actually gives us some flexibility so we can choose to adjust the br a brush size and we can paint on exactly where we want these details to be right and you can see we've got the erase option here as well so now if there's a very specific area within your terrain where you just want maybe this erosion to be visible you can now do that with this feature we can also choose to blur some of the region as well but this, this is really, really awesome. I'm so happy they included that. And there's a bunch of these really cool brushes that you guys can start using in your scene. And now over here, you'll see we can adjust the brush size, the brush rotation. So we've got something that's very specific, like this foot. By the way, this foot is not included in the program by default. So what that means is you can actually import your own uh, brushes. Uh, you just need to make sure that they are 512 by 512 and it's just like a regular alpha a black background and a white image. The white image is what's actually going to be visible and appear on you. And if you wanted to import your own custom brushes, there is a specific, specific folder that you need to go to and I'll show you. This is the directory over here. You need to go to your world creator, go to world creator data, streaming assets, 2D brushes, create a folder called custom and then just drag and drop your custom brush in there. Restart world creator and you'll see it visible within this area over here. So for this instance, let me go ahead, use the brush over here. Just clear this out. I'm going to go back to paint and I'm going to use this footprint so you can see I can rotate it and I can adjust the overall strength. So the cool thing about this is maybe you're creating a terrain like for instance with this footprint maybe there's this giant that's just walking all over the terrain over here. Now you can create that as an indentation in that very specific area. So if I click on done editing blend map and just click on surface you can see we get a very vague outline of where those footprints are. Now we'll probably maybe use another filter like, uh, let's see, maybe we want to use something like invert height, which actually creates an indentation. All right, so I'm going to actually get rid of this erosion deep. Here's our invert height, default name, 
and maybe we can use this if I go back to my edit blend map I can start stamping on some areas over there you can see it looks slightly more visible like that let me go back here edit blend map erase okay go to paint let's maybe decrease the brush size a little bit but now you can get really creative and start using brushes uh, within your scene just to create some interesting details uh, on your mesh and obviously I'd need to play around with this a little bit more to get that footprint to look a little bit more believable uh, but you guys get a general idea of what this can be used for and how you can allocate exactly where you want specific details to be on your mesh by using these awesome brushes that they've included over here all right and now if you've created a specific blend map that's got all of these details uh, included on it so I'll just erase some of that let's put our footprint back let's say this is a particular detail that we like and we want to continue using this somewhere else or maybe we've created another terrain you can actually just click on done you can go ahead and actually save this blend map so if you create a completely new terrain and you create an area you'll just come in here click on file and you'll load that blend map and you'll get that exact same blend map with all of those details like the footprints applied to it and you can apply it on a completely new uh, mesh you can see this footprint over here looks a lot more prominent but you'll have to play around with the placement and see where it looks best but like I said the most important thing with this feature is that we have brushes and they give us uh, creativity and freedom to place exactly where we want those filter details to be and we can get creative by using brushes and using these alphas to just stamp on different details in different regions so really cool what they've included here and I'd love to see how you guys use this and get creative with it by stamping on unique details on your terrain as well